for this first series, okay, uh, for MOOC webinar series number one. It is about planning and designing a MOOC course. Uh, we have several series. Later, I will give you the list. Uh, if I'm not mistaken, we have eight of them. So for this year, uh, we only have five faculties that involve in producing MOOC. Uh, last year, we, we have 10 of them, but uh, for this year, we reduce it to five. Okay, the five faculties, which are from Faculty of uh, Arts, okay, uh, F, uh, Faculty of Language as well, Faculty of Science, Social, Social Science and Humanities, Faculty of Resources, Science and Technology, and Faculty of Cognitive Science and Human Development. So we have five of them. So basically, for MOOC, we have three categories, which are MOOC with industry, MOOC uh, micro-credential, and credit transfer MOOC. So basically, for this seminar, we will uh, try to introduce you uh, the, the types of this MOOC. Okay. What are the requirements? What are the documents that you need to provide in order to develop your MOOC? So we move on. And for the objective for this session is, first of all, we would like to assist you on how or uh, in your planning, okay, the proposed MOOC according for your production workflow and how you want to design your course structure for your MOOC. And the third one, identifying various types of copyrights that can be used for MOOC. Copyrights is really important. Sometimes, uh, it's a big issue if you use a material that have a copyright, but if you use them, it, you can go, I can say it's a, it's all about legal issue, yeah? So make sure all of your materials, your videos, your documents, um, it is not uh, free from any copyright issue, okay? And the last one is about curating open edu educational resources, or you can say it as or ER for MOOC. So actually, uh, for MOOC, uh, specifically for MOOC, we have four of us which are involved and responsible to, to assist you in order to develop your MOOC. Uh, of course, it's me and uh, I'm Hafiza and I'm as an e-learning coordinator at CAM uh, and actually I'm a lecturer in chemical engineering at Faculty of Engineering. And then we have, uh, uh, okay, we also, Mohammed Cairo Hafiz, he's also joining us in this webinar. Um, he's from the Petari. He will be in charge uh, on any resources which are available in the Petari. So he could assist you, uh, the copyright issue, which one, how you want to, to know which document you can use and which uh, materials that you can use for your MOOC that which already provided in Petari. Uh, later, we will have a session with him after this. And the third person is Mazuki, okay, or Zuki, you can call him as Zuki. Uh, he will assist you in developing your material, uh, something like if you want to uh, have a, a studio recording MOOC, in iStudio, actually Mazuki is the person in charge of it. And actually you could email to me if you want to use the Green Studio, the iStudio, the MOOC Studio, you could email to me. I will, uh, again, I will discuss with Mazuki or when is the right time for you to do the recording. And then the, the last person is Fitzpatrick, or you can call him as Fitz. Okay, he is a videographer. Uh, if you want to have a promo video, if you want to do a promotional video, which is actually it's compulsory for you to do the MOOC because you want to introduce your MOOC, so you need to have a promo video. So Fitz would assist you in um, okay shooting. Okay, uh, something like you can do a shooting, a video shooting, uh, for your promo video. Yeah. So four of us, please contact us if you have any, uh, if you need any help. 
uh, in order to develop your MOOC. So basically, if if this is your first time hearing MOOC, actually M O O C is stands for Massive Open Online Courses. So massive, as you, as you can see, it's everyone can join. There's no limit on enrollment numbers. So MOOC is actually is not involved. It's not basically just for our students in Unimas. Actually, it's all around the world. Whoever is really interested with your course, actually they can join them. Yeah. So the open again, yeah, open. It's all the information is open to all. When they join it, they could access all of your materials as well. And of course, it is online. So all the content, all the discussions happen in, in online. Uh, basically, we are used to it right now. It's almost one year. We have, uh, we have been doing uh, teaching and learning online. And then, of course, yeah, of course, it's a standalone uh, or a part of training a curriculum. So this is Unimas MOOC. Later, I will uh, introduce you open learning platform. Okay, for MOOC, anything that that involve MOOC, you 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 will be using open learning platform. Okay. Uh, for example, in Unimas, for our teaching and learning in Unimas, basically in this semester, you will using ELIP platform. But for MOOC, you are using open learning platform. Okay, uh, so later I will show you how does it look like for the open learning. So basically in this open learning platform, uh, we have divided into 10 categories, which actually uh, it represents 10 faculties. Like you can see here, applied and creative arts, uh, resource science and technology, uh, until the latest uh, faculty, which is faculty of built environment. So we put as as built environment here. So each div uh, each book that you have developed, it will go into this one of this category. Okay, it depends on uh, which faculties you are. So basically, I have introduced you uh, at the beginning for actually start started from last year. We, it's not we actually from the higher education ministry. They have, they want to focus only three type of MOOCs, which are MOOC with industry, MOOC micro credential, and the last one is MOOC credit transfer. Okay, I will explain to you one by one the criteria for this MOOC. Uh, if I'm not mistaken, for this year, for the five faculties, we have MOOC with industry and also MOOC with uh, MOOC micro credential. So I will be focused more on these two types. So for MOOC with industry, actually this MOOC is developed based on collaboration with your faculty and the, its industry partner. Okay, and then this partner can be from industry or any association or any community. So the third one, okay, if you in order to do MOOC with industry, at least you need to provide MOA. Yeah, memorandum of agreement with the industry partner. Okay, at least they have a black and white. Uh, you have a black and white. So what the what the industry offer to you and what, uh, for your side, what what will you offer to them? So at least you have black and white in that case. So I will show you some examples. Uh, actually, we have uh, several of MOOC. MOOC with industry uh, for our previous MOOC developers. For example, here, as you can see, uh, this is a Chadanga memorandum, okay, uh, that we that you need to provide it and you need to send it to the Senate. Of course, they also need to have this this type of documents. 
Okay, for example, uh, first one, tujuan, okay, what, what is the purpose for the kertas kerja? So, actually, it's about uh, you inform to them and you request to have, request a kelulusan from the Senate that uh, that you do for the memorandum, the antara unimas, and what what is your partner? So, I just leave it blank there. So, is it with industry or community or any association? And then maybe you should put a okay background. Say so what is the purpose of this collaboration? And again here, again it's it's saying that do you have any? This is just for example. So I give you just just uh, an idea. What what are the points or what are the content in your uh, proposal? Okay in order you to give it to the Senate for the approval, okay? So if, after that, you need to do the objective as well. You need to provide them, okay, why this memorandum to, is, need, is need to be done, okay? Okay, maybe for here example, it's saying that mewujudkan rangkaian kerjasama with industry and the university. Okay, that's an example. And of course, uh, you saying that you give a uh, chances, a potential to the staff, academic, and the students uh, for the yeah, for the research purposes, or you can say any training uh, training activities. And then last one is saying that meningkatkan uh, visibility unimas bersama industri. So this one is cadangan again. Okay, permohonan. Memorandum perjanjian ini juga telah mendapat. Maybe if you have uh, prakulusan, you should mention it. And this type uh, for this example, it's saying that it's already been checked and reviewed by the pejabat penasihat undang-undang. Okay, so because actually we we collaborate with the industry, so make sure uh, the law. I can say everything should be okay. Uh, between the industry and as well from our side in Unimas. So it's saying that this from maybe pihak industry telah bersetuju untuk menyediakan dana. Maybe if 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 they involve in monies, you should mention it as well. Um, for how many years, for how long. Uh, and then if they provide you or something like uh, peralatan or maybe any workshop, Okay, uh, you should mention it as well because you need to be specific what they have provided uh, in terms of peralatan uh, or in terms of any workshop. And then last but not least, okay, per akuan. So you need to say that uh, it's not per akuan. Uh, it's saying that at least you, this, this kertas kerja is actually for uh, requesting approval from the Senate that you sh you could have a collaboration with the industry. Yeah. Uh, let me check a chat here because there's a chat. Okay. Is this MOA course specific or we simply follow through the MOA signed by the faculty for course that has already been booked? Okay. So it's not MOA course specific, uh, it depends on you as well. If it's only, okay, sometimes uh, I have seen several of uh, of uh, MOA, okay. Actually, it's just a partner with the industry due to the lab. Only the lab, it's not about the MOOC itself. But MOOC is one of the, I can say, one of the activities which Dalam, okay, as you can see here, okay, dalam ni, uh, if you can see, we have listed what are the things they have provide and what are the things we providing them, okay. So MOOC is one of the things that we provide to the industry for their, uh, I can say for their workers as well, okay. Sometimes, sometimes their workers need to have, a, I can say, a training, okay. So if we provide the material for them for the trainings or workshop or any courses just to upgrade the skill for their workers, so it is one of the perjanjian between your industry. So it's just sub, it's not, uh, basically it's not just 
kerja sama just the just the for MOOC purposes. Sometimes it's I can say it's really general. Okay, it's really big. The purpose is really uh, it's not just it's beyond the MOOC, but you can selectkan uh, MOOC is one of your uh, perkhidmatan that you can share with your partner, industry partner. Yeah. So hopefully uh, it clears you. If if you still uh, if you have a question, just ask me. So this is just example. Okay, it depends on your uh, memorandum of perjanjian as well. Uh, what kind of uh, perkhidmatan services that you can provide and what are the things uh, from your partner could provide to Unimas as well. Okay, so we move on. Okay, so that is for the MOOC with industry. So MOOC with industry, it depends on your, sometimes people are uh, a little bit confused. Must the content, uh, must the content for the MOOC with industry is uh, need to follow your, any courses which has been accredited? It actually depends on you because it's not based on the, uh, because right now you can see micro credential, it's saying that it must belong to an MQA accredited program. But for industry, uh, it depends with you, uh, with your site, I mean with Unimas and also with the industry, which topic it's relevant, that is relevant to them, okay? Uh, that's why it's perjanjian. You need to uh, have a agreement, okay, which one is related to them and which one you could provide to them. So it's not basically follow all of the topics in the course. It may be in one course right here. Okay, for example, here, course renewable energy system. Okay, maybe the industry would really love to have solar energy system and hydroelectricity system. So just two of them. So maybe because uh, solar, uh, for example, the industry are really uh, focused on solar production, maybe they, they need you to provide MOOC, which introduce and uh, in terms of solar energy system. So basically you just focus on solar energy system. Okay, what are the types, maybe introductions, how to, uh, how to do the solar energy systems, the layer of the panel, how to do the panel, maybe something like that. Okay, that is for MOOC with industry. Just focus that you have been agreed of. Which topic, okay, that is relevant between uh, your partner and your, uh, and your course, uh, your faculty. Okay, so we go for MOOC micro-credential here. Okay, MOOC micro-credential, it meet, yes. Is there any questions? Okay, so we go for MOOC micro-credentials. It's saying that it's micro. So it is a learning of smaller set, okay, of courses or modules or units, okay, to provide learners with knowledge, skills, and values. For example, yeah, you can see LU1 until LU6. Okay, for this course, Renewable Energy System, again, you need to choose course which already been accredited by MQA because it will allow your students to apply for credit transfer. Okay, so for example here, in this course, Renewable Energy, we have learning six learning units okay all right i have a question here let me check in chat who will identify the industry the team from the faculty or the industry concern had been identified for this one actually you need to discuss with your faculty uh, which industry that you want to collaborate okay Maybe you, you need to have a survey which industry really needs your expertise, okay? Uh, in terms of giving courses to their, this is an example, eh? to give their courses uh, to their uh, workers. Because some, because the workers also need some training, but this training 
is to enhance their their skills maybe their skills okay if i'm not mistaken faculty of language the uh, faculty of language and communication you are um, the one with the mogwin industry uh, maybe you need to uh, to ask uh, i guess it's community or association i'm not so sure about that but you need to ask what what is the expectation from them what they need what do they need from you uh, what are the costs they need uh, for you to provide to their workers okay so basically that's all that's all for the industry uh, actually you need to have a discussion it's not just with the faculty itself with the industry itself the demand from the industry Okay, hopefully uh, it's clear for you okay, we go uh, we continue to continue again with this uh, MOOC micro credential so in this uh, course we have six learning units so if you want to do MOOC micro credential because okay why why we need to split it into smaller set okay for example I want to split this course into three MOOC micro credentials. Okay, first, uh, okay, first, I would love to have only for first MOOC micro credential, I would love to have LU1 until LU3, unit, uh, learning unit 1 until learning unit 3, which consists of solar energy, wind energy, and hydroelectricity. Okay, and the second uh, MOOC micro credential, I will just to have wave energy system and tidal energy system because it's related to each other wave and tidal. And last one, I would love to have only bioenergy resources. Bioenergy, there's a lot of bioenergy. You can have bioethanol, uh, biofuel, so there's a lot of it. So I just want to have just LU6 for the last MOOC micro credential. Okay, because why we need to separate Okay, the, the main purpose why they do MOOC micro credential, okay, some, some of the participants would love to join only, maybe only, for wave energy system and tidal energy system. Okay, possibility they love, they're really interested with wave energy system and tidal energy system because they are, uh, they're, they're working with, with the ocean. They really love to know how to generate electricity from the wave and tidal. Okay, so if they have complete micro credential for number two, okay, only two unit topics, they will have a certificate. Okay, they will have a certificate completion certificate so if they have complete three of the MOOC micro credential okay if you have complete MOOC micro credential number one you will receive a completion certificate and then MOOC number two if you complete it as well you will receive the certificate and the third one if you complete it as well you receive another certificate so these three certificates Okay, when you want to apply for credit transfer, the participants or the students who already complete three of these courses could provide you these three certificates in order to have a full credit transfer for this course. Yeah, so that is for, uh, for credit transfer. But if uh, we need to remind that it's not just for students, Okay, students who, who who love or or who want to further study, but the participants also include the workers. Okay, so if the workers, uh, if they have uh, working in the only solar energy, okay, maybe they are really interested in first smoke. Yeah, so they will go the first only the first smoke here, and then when they complete it, they will receive a certificate. Can you imagine if the if the participants only interested with wave and energy, uh, tidal energy, they will really uh, focus on this LU4 and LU5, but they couldn't receive a certificate if they didn't complete LU1 LU, until LU3 and LU6. If it's a credit transfer, okay, credit transfer, more credit transfer, you need to provide all of the learning units in one 
MOOC. So that's the difference between MOOC micro credential and MOOC credit transfer. Yeah. So basically, my MOOC micro credential is uh, the difference between MOOC micro credential and credit transfer MOOC is just on how you want to deliver your course content. Uh, is it you want to deliver them in a smaller set or you just want to combine everything okay, from LU1 till LU6 in one MOOC? So I will just have a brief uh, exp uh, explain uh, in this credit transfer, MOOC credit transfer. So again, of course, it must belong to uh, MQA accredited program just to allow your student to apply credit transfer to earn a full course certificate. Yeah, full course certificate. Uh, it's different with the macro credential. It's just a set, a smaller set. Of course, they if they complete a first micro credential, of course, they have they will receive a completion certificate, but it's not a full course certificate unless they have complete three of the MOOC courses and they also have provide the three certificates yeah so basically uh, you need to carefully to choose which type of course you want to have a credit transfer and the same goes to the MOOC micro credential yeah because if it's related with industrial training practicum final year project dissertation or thesis so industrial training of course it's more about practicality. So if it's a if you if you want to do it as MOOC, um, the assessment you need to think on how you want to assess a psychomotor part for MOOC. Okay, and of course the final project it's all about the research. Uh, so I can say it's not suitable for doing MOOC credit transfer. So here, both CTM and micro credential are developed so that learners can use certificates for credit transfer in the future, as been mentioned earlier. And for credit transfer MOOC, okay, credits awarded for a course is based on a mapping of course content. Okay, um, in your course plan, it same goes to the MOOC micro credential. The content needs the contents for your MOOC need to have a need uh, is must seem at least 80 percent with your cost plan which have been accredited by mqa less than that uh, i can say you couldn't say it, it will be a problem if the students would would love to uh, credit transfer your mooc okay because it's not equivalent with the with your cost plan if it's less so it's we can say it's, it's lacking. So if it's lacking, you couldn't credit transfer the cost. So make sure at least, at least the minimum, okay, 80% of, uh, of your content in the MOOC must same with the cost plan, which already been accredited by MQA. Okay, if you do 90% is better. Okay, 100% is much, much better. So the minimum requirement is at least 80% of them. Okay. So if you want to do for the credit transfer or micro credential, yeah, uh, and also the MOOC industry, this is on how you want to deliver uh, your materials, your learning materials in your MOOC, you need to construct a self-instructional module. As you can see, MOOC, I can say uh, the student itself need to navigate uh, their learning by itself, yeah, by themselves. So at least you need to have uh, instructions, a clear instruction, what they need to do, what should they learn, uh, what, what are the assessment that they need to be done. So I will give you example for this one, okay? Maybe like uh, topic one here, okay? Topic one, you need to say uh, the topic learning outcome uh, to achieve course learning outcome because topic for each topic, uh, you have a, a different, I can say you have it, they have their own topic learning outcome. Okay, the topic learning outcome must 
be tally, it's not tally, at least this topic learning outcome is uh, will achieve this course learning outcome, which already been mentioned uh, in your course plan, which I've been accredited by MQA. So for example, uh, this one, okay, maybe uh, for example, for my course learning outcome number one, analyze an energy system prototype and CLO2, discuss and convey ideas clearly. Okay, for example, I choose like uh, for here, okay, uh, bioenergy resources, okay. So my topic is bioenergy resources. You, under bioenergy resources, you could do subtopic, okay, subtopic one, subtopic two. It's not about bioenergy, okay. If you want to sum uh, everything, you, you just clump it, as it will, the, I can say the learning materials will be much, much. Uh, if you do the video, uh, there will be a lot of explanation on bioenergy itself. The video for your MOOC, at least you need to provide less than 15 minutes, yeah? Only 15 minutes. It's not like one hour or 30 minutes. It's not recommended. So if you want to do that, you need to have a, a subtopic one, maybe bioenergy, for subtopic one, I want to introduce bioethanol, something like that. Okay, what is bioethanol? So for subtopic two, what is the process of bioethanol? Maybe something like that. Okay, so basically for your topic, okay, each of your topic or subtopic, you need to provide learning materials. First, learning materials, and then you need to have activities. The third one, you need to have assessment. Of course, each topic, uh, you need to have assessment activities and learning materials. Assessment is in order to assess the students whether your assessment, okay, uh, have they achieved, have your student achieve this analyze, okay, or discuss. Okay, for example, if this LU6 is under CLO2, discuss and convey the ideas clearly so what you should you do for assessment okay is it is it uh, okay if you put multiple choice of quiz okay you can do a multiple choice of quiz but is it okay to represent discuss and convey the ideas clearly so of course you need at least to have a, a forum or something like a chat so they could express their own ideas uh, for the assessment yeah so you need to plan make make a plan which assessment is suitable for your clo yeah if it discuss i guess it's not suitable to do a abc quiz it's not it's not a represent as discussion so at least you need to have a forum forum platform yeah you you, you can use a uh, forum tools uh, for your assessment yeah uh, so that's why i will give you this form okay at least you have a, an idea what are the what type of assessment that are really suitable for this subtopic for your clo which which represent which clo activities of course activities you can do anything which which actually um at least the students and as well the instructor have an interaction yeah and also okay we have i have mentioned about learning materials activities and assessment and also each topic you need to provide additional resources additional resources you can go for youtube or any journal paper so anything that is uh Okay, external external resources or further reading for the students in order to have a deep understanding for your topic. So for this, this additional resources, you need to be careful whether these resources, is there any copyright issue or not? Okay, because if you need, uh, if there's a copyright issue, you need to get a permission for the, you can say for the main, uh, or the one that, that created the material, okay, you need to get a permission in order for you to use in your MOOC, okay? So basically, there are four things that you need to do, you need to plan in order to construct your course plan for your MOOC, 
which are learning materials, activities, assessment, and also new additional resources over the reading. Okay. Okay, basically uh, for MOOC production, okay, MOOC development, we have three stages. Pre-production, which are planning and designing. So currently, I'm just uh, I'm just explaining to you about how the planning on how you want to construct uh, your learning materials. What type of learning material materials do you want to do? Video, uh, or I can say screen recording. Okay, or what type of assessment do you want to give to the students? Okay, so the designing as well. Okay, it, what type? what type of assessment is suitable for the student which represents your course learning outcome so is it quiz or is it a forum or do you want students to submit you a short essay okay uh, so it depends on your course objective again and uh, course objective again yeah so again the second stage would be production Okay, so after you have planned and designing, okay, I want to do this, I will provide this type of material. So the second stage is production. So what type of multimedia do you want? If you want to do a green screen, okay, you want to do the MOOC, uh, uh, MOOC Studio using MOOC Studio, okay, you can uh, email to me and you can say, uh, I can say you can propose what uh, the time and date that you are available to do the MOOC recording, we will help. We will help you to produce it. Okay, the videos from from the recording itself, it uh, it will be given to me, and I will try. Okay, I will try. I will help you to upload all of your videos in your uh, open learning platform, where where's your MOOC is actually been developed in the open learning platform. Okay, so again, the production, teaching and learning activities development. Again, uh, if if you saying that, for example, if you want to do quiz, uh, for your assessment, okay, uh, maybe you need to try on because open learning platform is different with Enip, so the I can say the navigation is also different, so you need to do, uh, to do it, and but no worries, this uh tools in open learning platform we will give you the you can say a workshop or seminar uh, on how to use tools in open learning okay we will assist you one by one okay so last but not least after you have finished or uploading all the materials in open learning platform everything is done so the third one is post production where where you could publish your MOOC Okay, uh, so the students could join your MOOC. And of course, it's not just about joining, you need to manage your MOOC as well because MOOC is not about just one semester, it's for the lifetime. So you need to know uh, who is the person in charge for your MOOC, okay? Uh, since you're doing your MOOC, actually this is your MOOC, so you need to do, um, on you need to, I can say to give a task who will uh, or task or assign someone okay maybe in your team member as well team members okay who will assess this uh, I can say assessment one who will assess for assessment two okay maybe you want to have a, a schedule okay for this year I would love uh, uh, okay for a okay uh, for instructor A to to do the management maybe for next year okay instructor B would do the uh, do the management for this course. Okay, it depends on you, but you need to manage your MOOC. Uh, it's not that after you finish it and you just left it like that. You need to uh, manage it continuously. All right. So, but if you have any problems in management, uh, sometimes there are technical error, uh, you could email to me as well. Okay, I will assist you uh, and solve your, I try my best to solve your problem. Okay, so list of content on open learning. Okay, so, oh, sorry. So I just give you a brief idea about a promo on open learning. So this is an example uh, for Sunway and UST. They're using a, a, begin, a beginner's guide 
to coffee. So there's uh, there's the MOOC. Yeah. So in this promo open learning, they have a promo video. This is prom promotional video. Okay. It's basically it's just to introduce what are uh, these courses. I can say introduce these courses. Uh, what will they learn on? Uh, and what do they expect if they join this course? And as you can see here, it's saying that start date, when will we start this course? And duration is flexible, it depends, okay? So if you want to do it maybe for a week, you can do that. If you want to do it for a year, it's okay because it depends on the participant as well when they uh, are available to, to do this course. And it's saying that this course is free and okay this one is just the numbers uh, who already joined this uh, course okay so basically in this promo on open learning you will see the synopsis of this course okay a summary okay this is a summary at least you have a roughly idea what is this course all about and what you will learn so the participants who want to join this course at least they have a rough idea okay what they can get from this course so for you as well, you need to provide, I can say, a, a simple summary on your course as well, just to make, uh, just to attract the participants to join your course. And this is all about the course learning outcome. Okay. Go for the next one. So the content itself, so for the introduction to the course, it's just a suggestion. So for example, for your introduction, maybe you have a welcoming text because uh, here MOOC, it's, I can say it depends. I can say uh, that's why it's really important to have a self-instructional module. So at least you have a briefing, what do they need to do? Uh, so basically, uh, for introduction, you have a welcoming text, so at least they be they can feel it's they have been welcomed to the to your to your MOOC, yeah. So again, of course, you need to introduce yourself as a facilit facilitator or instructor, and then overview again. Maybe you could do some ice breaking, but it depends on you as well. Is it necessary or not for the introduction? So, but for the teaching and learning. Okay, there are several examples of materials that could that you could use uh, for your material learning materials, slides and notes as well. Videos, maybe you can produce your own video or maybe using other video, external video. Reading materials such as journal, paper or news or article, you can use that. And teaching and learning activities, as we mentioned that, do you want to use forum or do you want to have a peer review? Uh, or chat, so it depends on you as well. So these are some examples of recorded video that you could use for your MOOC. Okay, like lectures here. Okay, maybe you can ask someone to record you when you are giving lectures, and maybe some interview. Okay, you could use this one as well. Self recording. Maybe you want to explain a little bit more about uh, some topic. Okay, self recording and then studio if you have studio as well a discussion okay uh, narrated slide usually currently yeah uh, for a whole year we are uh, i can say usually use this narrated slide to use for our teaching and learning in online right now okay another another recorded video you can use on location itself okay maybe some of our topics that need to use on location video. So the students or any participants that join your course could actually see the real situation. Yeah. Sometimes if you bro if you provide theoretically, they couldn't understand very well. So you need to provide them or give them example on the real location or on location. So maybe you can do it as live. Okay. If you really want to do live, for example, um, uh, some of students couldn't and still couldn't understand. Maybe you could give, uh, I can say, give uh, uh, a time. Okay, maybe you make you could mention in your MOOC saying that if you have any further requirement or inquiries or you want to ask me directly, uh, we will have a live session during this time. So basically, 
any participant who really love to know, okay, to get more in details, they could join this live uh, session. So you need to provide uh, maybe WebEx link, okay, the link for your online discussion. And demonstration as well. Uh, this one, if you have any any activities that need you to demo, so you need to provide demonstration video. Uh, green screen, okay, I've been, uh, okay, in COM, we have the green screen, we have the studio, okay. So if you want to use the studio, just uh, just email to me, I will help, uh, I can help you. And then, okay, sketch calculation, if there are any calculations uh, related in for the topic, you can use this calculation video. I can, I can say you can record when you're writing your uh, calculations. And if you have any like software that you need to use for your course, of course, if you need to use uh, narrated power, power, PowerPoint, it's not suitable. So you need to screen recording or screen casting your, uh, I can say your software on how you on how you to, on how you do it, on how you want to simulate it, uh, or animation. Okay, how you want to animate it. So you can use that one as well as your uh, materials. Okay, video one of the video. So this is the example. Okay, I've I this one is our MOOC actually, yeah, Unimas MOOC, uh, from Faculty of Medical Health and Science. Okay, uh, it's the MOOC is improve Im, improving improving clinical reasoning, reducing diagnostic errors. So this is a really good example for you to see. So first of all, they have uh, they have uh, Stated here the topic, okay, and then a brief introduction. At least the participants who join this one, uh, to join this course, at least they know. Okay, in this lesson, the learners will learn about. So they have a rough idea. Okay, this topic will introduce us about what. Okay, and then the objective. Yeah, the topic objective for this topic. Okay, it's just only two two objective for this topic list the classes and describe and give examples yeah and then they will give you the learning materials there here you can see there's a two lecture video there's a notes notes as well okay and then activities here okay activities here the activities uh if i'm not mistaken they give it as a forum and then assessment for here uh, in here they give a quiz as an assessment there are two assessment yeah quiz time okay quiz 3.1 quiz time 3.2 uh, you could rename it uh, it depends on you the renaming is not basically just uh, the numbering or renaming it depends on you okay this is additional resources old although it mentioned it's activity but when you see it's reading materials so actually this one is additional resources yeah Maybe you could describe uh, in this uh, introduction, uh, you need to just an example because we need to give a clear instruction to the participants who join this course, what they need to do. Maybe you could uh, give an instruction, you could view our lecture notes and activities before you could do the assessment, okay? Or you need to do the assessment for us to assess you. Uh, and the additional resources uh, you you want to have it is really good if you want to have a look on your uh, in the uh, in additional resources to have a better idea on this topic maybe something like that yeah so the references uh, we use for this smoke uh, we have four of it okay actually there's a lot but I I just put it as four here uh, Amalan Quality Mok Malaysia okay and then we have Garis Panduan Pembangunan dan Penyampaian Muk Malaysia, and we also have currently uh, at on 2019 they have uh, prepared guideline on micro credential, and for Unimas we have Dasar I Pembelajaran Universiti Malaysia Sarawak. Yeah? so for Dasar I Pembelajaran Unimas we just have a short brief on the, on the Muk micro credential in Muk with industry and credit transfer. But if you want to have a, can say, on how you want to develop your MOOC, 
uh, in micro credential or credit transfer. So you could you can view or take a look on garis panduan pembangunan dan penyampaian MOOC and also guideline on micro credential. Amala quality MOOC is okay, but but these two is uh, you could see it more clearly clearly. So the planning for our MOOC care, okay, first of all, nomination of EMAS MOOC 2021. So basically we we have already uh, uh, told you, you can choose either one, either you want to, to develop a new MOOC or you want to upgrading your MOOC. Upgrading your MOOC, it means that uh, previous year, like starting from 2014, actually we already have developed MOOC, okay? So if you want to upgrade your previous MOOC, you could also choose uh, upgrading your MOOC instead of proposing a new MOOC. But actually, uh, you have, uh, if I'm not mistaken, all of the five faculties which have been nom nominated for this year, all of uh, them uh, uh, nominate new MOOC. Yeah. So starting from this year, uh, five faculties will nominate one MOOC okay, for each year, yeah? So I will, I will give you the list again, uh, who, who are the, what are the faculties involved for 2021 until 2025, okay? So this, after you have nominated your MOOC and then again, planning and designing MOOC. So uh, there are two things you need to develop, your promo video, and also your MOOC content. MOOC content uh, is learning materials, assessment activities, and also the additional resources. But again, we want to have a quality MOOC, yeah? So we need to do a content vetting, okay? Content vetting is, uh, will be a point. Who will, who will vet your course is actually from your own faculty. So your faculty will appoint someone who is subject matter expert, which is expert in your course okay, or in your area. They will vet your course, either the content is reliable or is everything is okay. And the promo video vetting as well. Yeah. Uh, come, okay, for me, uh, our learning unit as well, our e-learning unit also will help you to vet in terms of technical, okay, we are not the expert one in content, so we are we are only vetting for the tech only technical part, yeah. After you have done everything, uh, when okay, after the vetting is done and you have done the corrections, and then you could okay, you could publish your MOOC, okay, but. If you want to have, a, I can say, wider participants, it's not just in Malaysia, you can request your MOOC to be listed in Open Learning Marketplace. Okay, Open Learning will give like advertisement, okay, some, it's not advertisements, they just list your MOOC into their marketplace. Yeah, so they have a, a procedure as well, but in order to them to market our MOOC, they also need to review our MOOC. So again, um, the open learning person in charge, I'm, I'm not so sure who will, be in, uh, who will be the reviewer, will review your course before they could uh, list your MOOC into open learning marketplace. Yeah. So again, um, this is the proposed workshop. Okay, for today we have planning and designing a MOOC course. And the second one, managing MOOC project development. Okay, this will be conducted next week on Wednesday as well. I will give you the invitation email. And the third and fourth will, will be conducted on May, sharing MOOC development experience and developing impactful MOOC learning experience. And the fifth one, how you want to structure your MOOC course. Okay, and how to develop your MOOC content. Okay, it will be on June. And producing videos for MOOC. Yeah, how you want to produce your uh, videos on July. And number eight, managing MOOC content on Open Learning. So after you have prepared all of your materials, okay, uh, all your activities, 
your plan are will you do a quiz or you, will you do a or just a forum we will assist you on how to use tools which are provided in open learning or when you want to upload your materials okay which tools are suitable for for i can say for your course learning outcome okay how, which tools which is appropriate for your assessment we could assist you yeah and the next table is here okay for this year we have faculty of arts faculty of cognitive science and human development faculty of language faculty of resources science and technology and faculty of social science yeah so these are the five faculties and next year we have we will have another faculties to develop the MOOC. okay so basically that's is all about the MOOC uh, for micro credential industry and credit transfer MOOC. Right now, I would like to introduce to you, okay, Muhammad Karo Hafiz from Petari. She, uh, he will introduce you the copyright issue and uh, open educational resources, which already are available in the Petari, right? So, Hafiz, I'll pass to you. Okay, Assalamualaikum and very good morning. So everyone can listen to me? Boleh, boleh. Boleh, huh? Okay. So, um, saya akan sambung uh, kita punya uh, sharing session pagi ini. Uh, continuation daripada uh, Dr. Afizah tadilah iaitu berkenaan to, uh, introduction to copyright and juga to open educational resources ataupun OER. Boleh dengar? Boleh, boleh. Okay. So, um, saya uh, Muhammad Khairul Hafiz bin Sanawi from uh, Pitari ataupun uh, formerly known as uh, Kais lah. And then... Uh, I've been into this unit since uh, 2020 after taking over from uh, Miss Sheila. Currently, she is on her study leave. Lah. So, introduction to copyright. So, uh, copyright is uh, referred to the legal right of the owner of intellectual property. Or in simpler terms, copyright is the right to copy, which means that the original creators of products and anyone that they give authorization to to are the only ones with the exclusive right to reproduce the work. Ataupun in other words, if you create information, you should get credit. So untuk copyright ini, um, saya rasa uh, daripada kalangan uh, lecturers ataupun academician, uh, I think uh, you all dah away dengan perkara-perkara uh, ataupun isu-isu tentang copyright lah. Um, macam mana nak dapatkan bahan-bahan uh, ataupun rujukan uh, yang mempunyai copyright lah ataupun macam mana kita nak dapatkan uh, rujukan yang uh, tidak diganggu ataupun tidak disentuh dengan isu-isu copyright. Okay, saya rasa kedemisian lebih faham lah. Okay. Copyright is a legal means of protecting an author's work. It is a type of intellectual property that provides exclusive publication, distribution, and usage rights for the author. Many different types of content can be protected by copyright. For example, books, poems, plays, song, films, and artwork. So, copyright di sini adalah satu bentuk um, law ataupun satu bentuk uh, kaedah untuk melindungi uh, sesuatu hasil karya ataupun hasil kerja seseorang individu. Okay, dan um, dengan copyright ini, dia memberikan satu hak eksklusif kepada pemilik ataupun pemunya uh, hasil kerja berkenaan untuk mengguna balik dia punya hasil kerja sama ada secara eksklusif iaitu dari segi untuk Uh, publication ke, pengedaran ke, ataupun dia gunakan uh, hasil kerja itu untuk um, kepentingan dia sendirilah. Ataupun, ataupun dalam bahasa yang lebih mudah, 
pemilik apa pemilik sesuatu karya itu ataupun sesuatu artikel atau sesuatu bahan itu boleh mendapat uh, benefit daripada uh, daripada copyright itu tadi lah. Okay, di Malaysia, the Malaysian copyright laws are related to musical works, uh, artistic works, literary work, sound recordings, films and broadcasting. All are eligible for copyright protection. The primary copyright law in Malaysia is the Copyright Act 1987. So di Malaysia, uh, copyright ini adalah selalunya lah ya, yang, yang saya faham ataupun mostly daripada pembacaan saya ialah Uh, mostly it relate, relate to hasil-hasil uh, seni macam muzik, hasil-hasil uh, uh, lukisan, hasil-hasil uh, literasi dan juga uh, filem dan juga uh, broadcasting. Mostly in Malaysia dia jarang, isu-isu uh, copyright ni dia jarang menyentuh kepada karya-karya uh, yang berbentuk macam akademik lah. Uh, ini adalah uh, yang saya baca ataupun yang saya dapati daripada saya punya saya ada buat sedikit research lah so mungkin uh, isu copyright dalam di, 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 di dalam uh, apa ni dalam bidang akademik mungkin mungkin belum mendalam ataupun mungkin belum ada ada apa ada mungkin belum ada yang suatu untuk trigger untuk untuk meletakkan copyright ini sebagai sesuatu penting lah di bidang akademik Okey, so di Malaysia ini kita punya copyright adalah di bawah akta uh, hak cipta 1987 lah. Okey. What's the purpose of copyright? Copyright deals with these problems by providing laws to control ownership and distribution of creative and expressive works. The purpose of copyright then is to create mechanisms to control ownership and distribution to expressive work. Okay. Two main purposes of copyright. Pertama ialah the protection of the author's right to obtain commercial benefit from the available work. Second one is the protection of the author's general right to control how a work is used. So copyright ini adalah kegunaan ya, adalah untuk melindungi uh, hasil karya seseorang author okay, dan mendapatkan keuntungan daripadanya. Contoh macam tadi yang saya cakap yang paling senang ialah uh, hasil-hasil macam muzik, uh, filem. Uh, itu adalah satu bentuk yang paling jelas di dalam Malaysia lah. Uh, yang mana apabila ada hasil muzik, ada hasil filem, mereka boleh mendapatkan benefit daripadanya lah dengan menggunakan isu copyright tadi lah. Dan juga uh, melindungi pe pemunya ataupun pemilik karya tadi uh, dan dia boleh menggunakan Uh, apa ni dia punya bahan tadi ataupun dia punya uh, hasil karya tadi uh, berdasarkan peraturan-peraturan uh, tertentu yang telah ditetapkan daripada copyright tadi lah. Okay, why do we need copyright? Kenapa kita perlukan copyright? Okay, we need copyright for a number of reasons. For example, uh, di Australia they have this uh, law uh, to recognize that individuals have the right to make money from the sale of copies of their works. Okay, di Australia, dia ada satu law uh, yang memberikan keistimewaan kepada individu ataupun uh, pemilik hasil kerja itu untuk menjana pendapatan ataupun mendapatkan wang uh, dengan menjual uh, copies daripada hasil kerja mereka. Ini ada satu adalah satu culture uh, di Australia lah. And copyright also protects creative works from being used without the copyrights on a agreement. Jadi uh, copyright ini melindungi uh, hasil kerja seseorang itu daripada diguna pakai ataupun dimanipulasi tanpa kebenaran. So kalau tak ada isu, tak ada copyright, so hasil kerja itu tak dapat dilindungi lah. So sebab itulah kita memerlukan copyright. Jadi kalau dengan adanya copyright ini ada ataupun ada dengan adanya copyright law ini uh, hasil kerja seseorang individu dapat dilindungi lah. Okay, which types of work are subjected to copyright? Copyright ownership gives the owner the exclusive right to use the work with some exceptions when a person creates an original work 
fix in a tangible medium for he or she automatically owns copyright to the work. Okay, there are many types of works are eligible for copyright protection. These are the example. Okay, yang pertama ialah audiovisual works such as uh, TV shows, movies and uh, online videos. So ini memang very obvious lah. Uh, I think uh, most of the culture in the world, around the world, memang dia uh, apa ni? Menggunakan uh, copyright yang yang sangat sangat strict kepada TV shows, terutama in US, in Canada dan sebagainya lah. Sound recordings and musical composition ini pun sama antara antara benda apa ni? Antara hasil kerja yang uh, diletakkan copyright yang sangat strict lah. Written works such as lectures, articles, books and musical compositions. Visual works such as paintings, posters and advertisement. Video games and computer software. And dramatic works such as plays and musical. So these are the list yang uh, yang pada saya pada ranking yang tinggi menggunakan ish, apa ni copyright law ni lah. Okay, rules of copyright. Just because you find it online, it doesn't mean that it is free to use, even if you are a teacher or student. Okay, so one of the most important rules of copyright is tidak semestinya kalau kita jumpa sesuatu sumber or sesumber rujukan itu daripada online, tidak tidak bermakna ianya free ataupun tidak bermakna ianya tidak dilindungi oleh uh, apa ni copyright. So maksudnya kita kena berhati-hatilah kalau kita jumpa sesuatu uh, rujukan di dalam online atau di internet. So kita kena pastikan betul-betul uh, adakah sumber berkenaan uh, memang free ataupun tertakluk di bawah copyright. Kedua, there are a lot of resources you can use freely including work that has a creative commons, license or is in the public domain. Okay, ini adalah uh, yang memang betul-betul tidak dilindungi oleh copyright lah. So selain daripada list, list, list uh, sumber yang dilindungi oleh copyright, ada juga terdapat uh, a list of a number of resources yang memang free yang uh, kita boleh guna, yang kita boleh uh, copy dan kita reuse banyak kali di dalam public domain lah. Yang ketiga, you have a right as a creator to have your work protected from copying and you can also give your own content a creative common license. So sebagai pemilik kepada suatu bahan ataupun as a creator of that work, kita ada ada hak untuk melindungi hasil kerja kita tadi daripada di copy ataupun diguna pakai semula dan juga kita boleh um, uh, nak share konten tersebut dengan uh, dengan mengenakan syarat-syarat tertentu lah. Okay, yang keempat, fourth one is if in doubt about using content, ask the creator for permission. So ini paling penting. Kalau kita jumpa satu-satu konten -satu yang uh, kita rasa macam kurang pasti, so kita boleh search the, uh, the creators for permission. Okay, ataupun uh, mencari alternatif yang free. Okay, ataupun mengguna pakai material kita sendiri. Ataupun uh, purchasing an alternative that has the usage rights you are after. Instead of looking for loopholes, consider whether you are being the most responsible and ethical digital citizen you can be. Okay, ini pun penting juga lah. Okay. Okay, how do I get permission to use copyrighted materials? Okay, yang pertama, to determine, determine if permission is needed. So, kalau kita jumpa satu-satu uh, resources di dalam online dan kita dapati uh, resources berkenaan dia dilindungi oleh copyright ataupun dilindungi oleh undang-undang copyright, kita perlukan permission daripada pemilik ataupun uh, pemunya lah, pemilik kepada bahan berkenaan lah. Kena pastikan betul-betul, you have to identify macam mana nak dapatkan permission lah. Okay, ke yang keduanya, identify the owner. Okay, as I mentioned earlier. Identify the rights needed. 
the first one is to contact the owner and negotiate with him or she whether payment is required. And the fifth one is to get your permission agreement in writing. Okay, so these five uh, rules to get the permission sangat-sangat penting lah. Okay, terutama sekali uh, mendapatkan kebenaran mengenal pasti pemilik ataupun uh, pemunya bahan tadi. Okay, uh, pastikan kita dah contact dan juga kita telah membuat negotiation. Sama ada kita boleh dapatkan rujukan berkenaan secara percuma ataupun adakah kita akan dikenakan sebarang cas. Dan juga pastikan setelah kita dapatkan permission tu kena ada written agreement lah. Okay. Okay. Di dalam uh, copyright, uh, there is one term yang kita panggil sebagai fair use. Fair use is an US legal concept that allows copyrighted work to be used for certain purposes without obtaining permission or making payment. So istilah fair use ini uh, kita gunakan terhadap sesuatu bahan ataupun sumber tadi uh, yang mempunyai copyright boleh digunakan untuk tujuan-tujuan uh, tertentu tanpa perlu kita mendapatkan kebenaran without any permission ataupun without making any payment to the owner. Tetapi uh, fair use ini adalah sesuatu yang masih Uh, kita kata uh, masih uh, masih satu isu yang agak 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 macam kurang jelas lah, okay? So fair use may apply if the copyrighted material is used for performance or displays. For face-to-face -face classroom teaching is a non-profit educational institution or using a lawful copy of the work. So uh, fair use ini uh, selalunya lah kita gunakan untuk Uh, apa ni uh, non profit punya uh, situation lah okay so in that kind of situation kita boleh gunakan term fair use tadi lah untuk sesuatu bahan yang didapati ada copyright as long as it's not for benefit uh, ataupun as long as it's not for profit then this fair use term can be used for a copyright copyrighted work lah hmm. Okay, we understand that most of the work you are accessing online or in books is going to be protected by copyright. This means that you can't necessarily use these materials freely as freely on your class blog, website, or your students in your classroom. Fair use isn't as simple as it seems. Instead of trying to find loopholes with fair use, a better approach is to look for materials that you can use for free. Okay, macam yang saya cakap tadi lah. Uh, fair use uh, tidaklah semudah seperti yang uh, di apa ni, macam yang kita dengar lah. Okay, so it is better for us to look for sumber lain ataupun material lain yang kita boleh gunakan secara percuma. Kita tidak perlu uh, menyusahkan diri kita untuk uh, apa ni, untuk terikat dengan copyright ataupun nak, nak mendapatkan permission dan sebagainya lah. Okay. What happens if you use copyrighted materials without permission? Okay, using creative works such as a logo, a photo, image, or text without permission can infringe copyright law. All businesses need to understand how to legally use copyrighted material. If you can break copyright law, even by accident, you can face a largely fines and even imprisonment. So this is the the. Uh, threat that will happen to us kalau kita menggunakan sesuatu material ataupun sumber itu yang telah dilindungi oleh copyright issue lah. So uh, the worst could happen to us is we will face a large fine ataupun even being in prison lah. So that are the risks if, if, if you use a copyrighted, copyrighted material without any permission. Okay, terms of copyright. Okay, setiap copyright ni dia ada ada validation period lah. Okay, pertama sekali copyright is valid for a lifetime of the author. Contoh, uh, maksudnya ialah seumur hidup uh, author berkenaan lah. Contoh, kalau dia hidup sehingga umur dia 100 tahun. So, he owns the copyright until 100 tahun lah. And then when, contoh, if he pass away, and then plus another 70 years. Okay, and it may be passed on through a will 
ataupun it may be sold to a person or to, com to a company. So contoh kalau lah dia pemilik asal tu dah dah pass away ataupun sudah meninggal dunia, okay dia boleh di 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 sambung ataupun di pass on through a will ataupun dijual semula kepada orang lain ataupun individu individu lain ataupun uh, pemilik yang baru dengan nilai-nilai tertentu lah. So that is the the apa ni kata orang uh, the the keistimewaan lah memiliki copyright lah atas atas satu pemilik ke apa copyright di atas satu hasil kerja kita sendiri lah. Okay. Uh, in conclusion. Not only is copyright compliance the law, it is accepted and encouraged in the university community as well. It's as a way to protect the efforts of students and scholars and as a way to encourage further research. Please be respectful to others by always practicing copyright compliance when undertaking your work or research, etc. Okay, uh, I will continue on with uh, OER. Hafiz, hi, I'm Terry. Yeah, Terry. Uh, I have a question. Uh, okay. What about what about uh, fair use? Okay. Uh, yeah, can can you explain to us uh, about the fair use concept? Fair use, fair use concept. Yeah. Okay, hold on. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, the fair use is actually um a law ataupun uh, kebenaran lah kebenaran yang membenarkan uh, a limited time of use uh, untuk sesuatu bahan yang ada copyright lah. Okay. So, fair use ini uh, membolehkan kita menggunakan bahan uh, tanpa perlu mendapatkan kebenaran daripada pemilik asal ataupun tanpa perlu membuat apa-apa bayaran sekiranya uh, sumber ataupun material berkenaan Uh, dilindungi oleh copyright lah. So itu itu maksud term fair use lah. Maksudnya you boleh guna apa-apa sumber yang you jumpa tetapi let's say uh, sumber bukan dia ada copyright. So you tak perlu dapat permission. You tak perlu uh, nak nak cari siapa pun dia siapa pemilik uh, asal bahan berkenaan dan you boleh guna dia punya dia punya bahan itulah tanpa perlu mendapatkan uh, kebenaran. Tetapi dengan syarat uh, apa yang you guna tu tidak digunakan as a, as a, apa, uh, digunakan untuk yang non profit lah. Uh, maksudnya you can share dengan orang lain ataupun you boleh uh, gunakan dalam kelas. Tetapi uh, it's not for profit use lah profit, uh, untuk dapatkan profit lah. Macam itulah. Clear Terry? Okay, thank you. Okay, uh, we, we, we have one question from the chat. Okay. Uh, from okay. Prof, Prof Edmund. Uh, can okay. we can we assume that as long as the adapted materials are not used for commercial or monetary profit purposes, then is it okay to use? You know. Yeah, way? boleh. Tak ada masalah. As long as it's not for for profit use lah, kita boleh guna pakai bahan yang dilindungi oleh copyright tadi lah. Uh, tanpa apa-apa isu yang akan berlaku selepas itulah memang kita boleh gunalah asalkan uh, yang paling penting ialah kalau kita menggunakan bahan berkenaan uh, kita gunakan is untuk untuk teaching and learning lah tanpa profit macam macam uh, untuk mendapatkan uh, uang dan sebagainya lah as long as we are not using it for profit then it's, it's okay All right, thank you for the explanation, right. Hafiz. Okay. Okay, hello. Sorry for the delay. So, everyone can still can listen to me? Boleh, boleh. Okay. So um, for my second slide, uh, I will be talking about uh, Open Electronic Resources or OER. So actually um, for Pitari, uh, 
we have uh, been collecting ataupun we have been uh, preparing our OER collection since uh, 2016. It was uh, before this under Miss Sheila. Lah. So uh, she is currently on her study leave. So I, I am uh, replacing her in order to provide the content for Petari OER. Okay. Yeah. Assalamualaikum dan uh, salam Ramadan. Okay. Uh, pada kali ini saya nak share sedikit berkenaan uh, dengan uh, Open Electronic Resources ataupun OER dan juga koleksi-koleksi uh, OER yang terdapat di dalam petari uh, ataupun perpustakaan Tuan Dua Ramadhan Yaakub. Uh, sebelum saya proceed, uh, saya perkenalkan diri saya. Saya adalah uh, Muhammad Fairul Hafiz bin Sanami. Uh, Perpustakaan di bawah unit uh, e-learning support unit. Dan uh, saya sebenarnya menggantikan uh, Cik Dayan Sheila yang sebelum ini uh, berada di bawah unit ini lah. Dan sekarang beliau sedang bercuti belajar. Dan uh, saya mengambil alih tugas-tugas beliau di bawah unit e-learning support ini lah. Jadi pada kali ini saya nak, nak share sedikit berkenaan dengan OER ataupun Open Electronic Resources. Okay, apa itu Open Educational Resources ataupun apa itu OER? OER is linked to an educational movement that began about 20 years ago and has become a global educational movement. Okay, OER pada asalnya bermula sebagai satu gerakan untuk uh, mempromosikan pendidikan uh, secara uh, maya ataupun secara online yang mana uh, OER ini dia menekankan banyak kepada uh, fair education uh, maksudnya untuk mendapatkan ataupun Uh, mewujudkan satu sistem pendidikan sama rata. Okey, uh, OER ini uh, ber, 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 berlandaskan uh, prinsip uh, equal education kepada semua lapisan masyarakat. Dan uh, OER ini pada asalnya adalah untuk uh, memastikan uh, sistem, uh, sistem pendidikan menggunakan bahan-bahan uh, ataupun uh, mendapatkan uh, rujukan yang berkualiti tinggi dan juga uh, mendapatkan uh, kaedah pembelajaran yang cepat dan murah. Itu adalah pada asalnya Kenapa OER ini ataupun kenapa pergerakan OER ini dicetuskan pada satu, satu masa dahulu lah. Okay. Bagi fakulti ataupun ahli-ahli uh, akademik yang menggunakan uh, OER ataupun Open Education Resources ini uh, bermaksud mereka menggunakan uh, sumber rujukan ataupun resources yang percuma yang berkualiti tinggi yang mana uh, ia telah membantu untuk mengurangkan kos uh, kos membeli bahan secara fizikal yang jauh lebih mahal jadi dengan adanya OER ini secara tidak langsung uh, kos pengoperasian ataupun kos untuk mendapatkan bahan-bahan fizikal contohnya buku uh, dapat dikurangkan dengan banyak dan it sets up a fair education system untuk semua. Maksudnya semua lapisan masyarakat boleh mendapatkan pendidikan uh, yang adil dan saksama dan uh, mendapatkan mendapatkan jurang yang ini sangat besar di antara golongan-golongan yang uh, berkemampuan dan juga golongan-golongan pelajar yang kurang berkemampuan. Okey, jadi OER ini adalah 
sekali kelas ni adalah yang freely available yang openly licensed resources seperti uh, textbooks, media, videos, articles dan pelbagai bentuk lagi yang berguna ataupun dia are useful for teaching, learning and assessing as well as for research purposes. Maksudnya OER oh, ini bukan saja digunakan untuk pengajaran dan pembelajaran tapi juga sesuai digunakan untuk uh, research uh, untuk dibuat uh, pelbagai bentuk kaedah pembelajaran lah yang sesuai dengan uh, bentuk OER. Okay. Sekali lagi, what is OER? OER is teaching, learning and research materials in any medium, digital or otherwise that reside in the public domain or have been released under an open license that permits no cost access, use, adaptation and distribution by others with no or limited restrictions. Jadi OER ini adalah satu uh, bahan, bukan, bukan satu lah, dia adalah pelbagai bentuk bahan dalam pelbagai bentuk medium okey uh, a secara digital ataupun sebaliknya yang berada di dalam public domain ataupun yang tidak dilindungi oleh a uh, peraturan seperti contohnya peraturan copyright ataupun hak cipta uh, yang mana uh, pengguna boleh mendapatkan ia secara percuma boleh menggunakannya dan boleh uh, di disebar semula uh, tanpa sebarang restriction tanpa limitation maksudnya boleh digunakan berulang-ulang kali boleh di 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 modify boleh di copy ataupun boleh di uh, di apa? di remix tanpa perlu uh, meminta izin ataupun dapatkan kebenaran daripada pemilik asal bahan berkenaan dan juga tanpa perlu membayar apa-apa denda kerana OER secara 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 asasnya adalah bahan-bahan yang freely available yang percuma yang tidak dilindungi oleh apa-apa peraturan ataupun apa-apa restriction seperti isu ataupun seperti uh, apa ni isu hak cipta ataupun copyright tadilah okey OER adalah open educational resources uh, untuk teaching, learning atau research materials that are in the public domain or released with an intellectual property license that allows for free use, adaptation and distribution. Sekali lagi, OER adalah uh, bahan ataupun sumber rujukan yang uh, dibenarkan penggunaannya secara percuma yang boleh diadaptasi dan juga boleh disepakan. Boleh digunakan banyak kali, berulang-ulang kali tanpa perlu uh, terikat dengan apa-apa peraturan lah. Terutama sekali macam saya cakap tadi adalah peraturan hak cipta. Di sini OER tidak terikat dengan isu-isu isu berkenaan lah. Okay, again, uh, educational material offered freely and open to anyone under license agreement. OER adalah bahan-bahan uh, pembelajaran yang diberikan ataupun ditawarkan secara percuma dan terbuka kepada sesiapa sahaja untuk setiap lapisan umur. Uh, di bawah satu uh, license agreement okey dia ada satu license agreement lah tetapi uh, license agreement berkenaan bukanlah melibatkan isu meminta kebenaran ataupun akan melibatkan isu-isu yang perlu memerlukan seseorang itu uh, membayar denda sekiranya menggunakan bahan berkenaan tetapi ia lebih kepada uh, kebenaran untuk menggunakan OER berkenaan secara percuma dan juga menggunakannya untuk tujuan pendidikan. Uh, maksudnya non profit usage uh, non profit usage lah. Okey. Ah uh, OER juga adalah source material created under an open license can be reused, can be improved, can be distributed or can be remixed. Okey. Boleh di reuse, improve, redistribute ataupun remix. Okey. So we go to fun facts about OER. Yang pertama, expanded access to learning. It can be accessed anywhere and anytime. OER can, kita boleh dapatkan di mana-mana saja, bila-bila masa saja. Okey, dalam komputer, pusat komputer, dalam laptop, uh, handphone, atau juga apa-apa bentuk, uh, apa ni, 
bentuk-bentuk uh, gadget yang kita boleh dapatkan lah yang boleh yang boleh diakses kepada internet ataupun yang kita boleh gunakan untuk online lah. Okay, yang kedua, ability to modify course materials. So, uh, bahan-bahan OER ini uh, boleh dimodify, boleh diubah suai uh, mengikut keperluan uh, pembelajaran masing-masing lah. Mengikut keperluan subjek, topik dan sebagainya. Dia boleh di, diubah suai, ditambah baik mengikut keperluan. Okay, yang ketiga, enhancement of course material. Okay, text, images, videos can be used to support different approaches of learning. Okay, so OER ini dia ada banyak. Uh, bukan dia tidak semestinya dalam bentuk teks saja lah, tetapi ada juga gambar, berbentuk video, berbentuk audio, uh, dan kita boleh gunakan uh, apa? Setiap OER ini uh, mengikut keperluan pengajaran masing-masing lah. Okay. Yang keempat, rapid dissemination of information. Okay, textbook can be put forward quicker online than publishing a textbook. Okay, maksudnya OER ini uh, keboleh capaian untuk mendapatkan maklumat dalam lebih cepat berbanding kalau kita menggunakan uh, traditional book ataupun menggunakan kaedah yang uh, kaedah yang lama itu menggunakan buku secara fizikal lah. Okay, yang kelima, cost saving for students. Okay. So since OER adalah uh, sumber ataupun resources atau perujukan yang terdapat secara online, of course dia akan lebih uh, menjimatkan lah terutamanya kepada pelajar-pelajar sebab mereka boleh uh, akses secara online dengan mudah. So jadi mereka tak perlu nak nak uh, nak protestate, nak, mereka tak perlu nak print, mereka tak perlu nak beli buku. I wish will save them a lot of money lah. Okay. So we go to the 5R of OER. Okay, yang pertama, R yang pertama adalah retain. The right to make, own and control copies of the content. Uh, sebagai contohnya, boleh download, boleh duplicate, boleh simpan dan boleh uh, mengurus uh, bahan berkenaan lah. Okay, so kita boleh uh, cipta, kita boleh Uh, memiliki dan kita boleh mengawal uh, salinan kepada konten berkenaan. Okay, hal yang kedua adalah use. The right to use the content in a wide range of ways. For example, in a class, in a study group, uh, dalam website ataupun dalam video. So, kita ada uh, kebenaran untuk menggunakan konten konten berkenaan secara meluas, uh, secara online, dalam group, dalam kelas, even uh, untuk video sekalipun kita boleh gunakan konten OER berkenaan. Yang ketiga, revise. The right to adapt, to adjust, modify or to alter the content itself. Kita boleh uh, adaptasi, kita boleh ubah suai ataupun kita alter konten-konten OER berkenaan. Dan sama contoh, kita nak, nak tukar bahasa contoh daripada bahasa Melayu kepada bahasa Cina ataupun from English to Spanish. So, kita boleh ubah suai. Okay, keempat adalah remix. The right to combine the original or revised content with other material to create something new. Kita boleh remix, kita boleh campurkan semua material OER berkenaan. Okay, dan kita boleh hasilkan OER yang baru. Okay. Yang kelima adalah distributed. The right to share copies of the original content, your revisions or your remixes with others. Maksudnya so, selepas contohlah kita dah dah dapat create satu konten yang baru, kita boleh uh, kongsi uh, kongsi uh, bahan kenaan atau konten kenaan uh, ataupun kita boleh juga uh, gunakan konten yang telah kita remix tadi untuk uh, share lagi dengan konten OER yang lain. Okay. Types of OER include but are not limited to Jalabi, lesson plans, learning modules, lab experiments, simulations, course videos, discussion, prompts, assignments, assessments, every guides and course design templates. Ini adalah contoh-contoh ataupun bentuk-bentuk OER. Okay. Sekarang saya nak, nak kongsikan sedikit uh, jenis-jenis OER yang 
terdapat di dalam koleksi petari yang mana di petari kita cuma mempunyai empat bentuk iaitu audio, images, teks dan juga video. So yang ini adalah uh, this four is our our priority because based on our uh, usage lah uh, daripada data dan juga statistik uh, daripada pengguna-pengguna kami lah. So this four is the most highest uh, untuk yang paling kerap digunakan oleh uh, pengguna di Pitari lah. So saya akan share uh, share saja uh, uh, apa ni nama-nama koleksi berkenaan dan mungkin uh, tuan-puan uh, boleh search sendiri selepas uh, selesai uh, apa ni uh, apa sesi sharing ni lah. So untuk mendapatkan ataupun untuk pergi kepada koleksi OER di Petari, tuan-tuan ataupun tuan-tuan boleh lah uh, ke Petari website okay. www.library.ini.my dan pergi kepada e-resources dan cari ke Open Access Educational Resources. So di dalam di dalam itu nanti tuan-tuan akan dapat melihatlah uh, list of our OER collection yang telah dikumpul, yang telah kita kemas kini daripada tahun 2016 sehingga sekarang lah. Ok, ini adalah contoh OER on audio. Saya bagikan uh, beberapa contoh saja. Contohnya kita ada audio jungle, kita ada epidemic sound, kita ada looper man. So, ini adalah contoh-contoh OER ataupun uh, material OER dalam bentuk audio. Dalam, uh, ini adalah antara yang popular lah. So dalam 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 OER ni, tuan-tuan uh, akan dapat uh, lihat a list of audio sounds. Uh, dia boleh boleh jadi uh, instrument sound, boleh jadi uh, apa ni, orkestra pun ada, uh, lagu pun ada. So dia ada banyak. So tuan-tuan boleh buat uh, uh, pencarian uh, daripada contoh-contoh yang saya sharekan ini lah. Okay. Yang kedua adalah OER on videos. So ini yang tiga ni adalah antara contohnya kita ada Fender, kita ada Fox Streams, kita ada Media Burn Archive. So ini uh, video of course kita tahulah video. So dia ada pelbagai bentuk video. Ada dokumentari, ada sukan, ada filem, filem clips, uh, dia ada movie clips, uh, iklan pun ada, uh, even Uh, videos of cartoon pun ada. So dia ada banyak. So it, it is quite interesting. Saya suka juga lah melihat uh, OER dalam bentuk video ni lah. Okay. Yang ketiga ialah OER on text. So this is uh, text based OER. Uh, contoh ni adalah Europeana dan juga MDPI. Uh, ni adalah OER on images. Kita ada 1 million, 1 million free pictures and juga find a photo. So ini adalah uh, photo based ataupun image based uh, OER. Kita dapat lihat uh, banyak koleksi tu lah uh, seperti haiwan, uh, tumbuh-tumbuhan, pemandangan, bangunan dan sebagainya lah. Okay. Librarians play a key role in OER initiatives in advocating developing, exploring and managing OER along with helping you to find your OER. Librarians can help you better understanding about copyright and licensing concepts and guide you through your Creative Commons licensing options if you choose to create materials yourself. So, um, dalam perkembangan terkini OER, okay, uh, kami sebagai pustakawan ataupun experience uh, turut memainkan uh, peranan penting di dalam membantu pihak-pihak uh, uh, di fakulti ataupun pihak-pihak akademik uh, dalam tahun ini mengenal pasti uh, ataupun mengurus ataupun membangunkan uh, OER. Okay? Dan uh, kami juga uh, boleh membantu Uh, para akademisi untuk memahami dengan lebih dalam 
tentang konten-konten OER terutamanya yang bentuk berkenaan dengan isu-isu copyright, isu-isu um, licensing, kita komen dan sebagainya lah. Dan di Petari, we are open for any apa, inquiries uh, sekiranya terdapat isu-isu yang yang mungkin uh, para akademisyen kurang jelas, kita boleh bantu. Dan uh, dengan dengan apa, dengan berkembang pesatnya OER ini, kita pun berharap uh, yang library dan juga pihak pihak akademisyen atau pihak fakulti uh, boleh bergerak seiring ataupun bekerjasama uh, supaya kita boleh uh, apa ni uh, saling berkomunikasi dan membantu antara satu sama lain lah. Okay, as the use of OER becomes more widespread, we have access to more. to more repositories where you can search for OER, okay? Keep in mind that while you may not find OER that perfectly suits your needs, most OER can be modified, can be customized to fit within the context of your course or meet the needs of your students. And yes, that takes time and consideration, but that time and consideration can greatly benefit your own teaching and research as well as the overall learning experience that your students have. Okay, jadi dengan berkembang pesatnya uh, OER, lebih lebih lagi dalam situasi pandemik sekarang, um, kami di perpustakaan ataupun di pihak petari uh, boleh membantu dalam uh, mengenal pasti uh, saluran-saluran yang yang sesuai ataupun channel-channel yang sesuai untuk mendapatkan OER bagi membantu para-para ahli akademik di Unimas uh, untuk mendapatkan bahan-bahan yang sesuai dengan uh, pembelajaran dan pengajaran mereka lah. Dan uh, mungkin tidak semua bahan-bahan OER ini adalah sesuai dengan uh, apa ni keperluan pengajaran berkenaan tetapi kita boleh bekerjasama untuk kita modify ataupun kita create new content of OER yang boleh relate dengan pengajaran dan pembelajaran tuan-tuan dan perempuan lah. Dan uh, ianya bukan mudah tapi kalau kita uh, di antara library dan juga pihak akademisyen boleh bekerjasama, boleh berkomunikasi, uh, kita boleh uh, work it out okay? dan uh, it will be very good that if you can help each other lah. Okay? So I think uh, itu sahaja. Terima kasih kerana mendengar and uh, sekiranya ada pertanyaan uh, boleh directly uh, contact saya ataupun uh, contact saya melalui email lah. Terima kasih. Okay, thank you Hafiz. Bye.